technologies that you're speaking of, the Tesla technologies, and everything else that uh, a lot of people are confusing with mind control issues or various other kinds of, uh, uh, they're, they're melting a lot of these technologies in terms of their um, abilities to, or, or capabilities. And so um, when you present that question, it presents kind of like no confusion on your part as a person, but a confusion on the part of the public as to what these technologies were meant to do. And uh, HARP itself is such a huge complex in Gakona, Alaska, that it actually was meant to serve half a dozen functions. And to put this into perspective for you, the real technology, say, for instance, uh, Nick Begich, who has been working on HARP for quite some time because his father was an Alaskan senator who died under mysterious circumstances, quite possibly was assassinated. Um, he often speaks of HARP with H-A-R-P. That's not the original acronym. Uh, I was sent specifically to investigate what kind of HARP technology was leaking or hemorrhaging in terms of information to Project Censored at Sonoma State University. Now, Sonoma State University, for years, well over a decade, it, it may be 30 years at this point, has been host to Project Censored, where journalism majors uh, report on the most underreported stories of the year. And it's funded by John McLaughlin of the McLaughlin Group, uh, Ted Koppel, uh, a number of big names in the industry. And uh, so the Department of Defense promised me a promotion and a pay raise if I would attend Sonoma State for two decades and see what kind of information was hemorrhaging to the Project Censored group, specifically concerning HARP. Well, I found out that an enormous amount was hemorrhaging. But uh, I found out more about HARP than most of its employees know because most of its employees are basically shuttered from the details of their operation by compartmentalization. Right. And, uh, and so I got to look at it from a God's eye perspective, so to speak. And one of the things that I can tell you uh, is that uh, HARP um, actually has a totally different acronym. Uh, it's H A cubed R squared P squared. And the numbers don't show up in the acronym. It just shows up as H A R P. But it stands for High Frequency Activated Auroral Atmospheric Resonance Research Projection Program. And um, the whole idea about HARP was based on World War II and the tremendous advantage that the Japanese had over the United States based on natural currents and natural air currents. What people don't realize is that Japan was the first nation on planet Earth in the history of humanity to have a leader who was a trained scientist. Emperor Hirohito of Japan, who was worshipped as a god by the Japanese people, also was a trained scientist a marine biologist. And as a marine biologist, he was familiar with the Kuroshio, the Japanese current, which flows only one way from Japan to the United States. And he was familiar with the jet stream, which was the airborne version of the Kuroshio. And the jet stream was something that because he was a scientist who investigated marine life, he knew so much about it. And the Americans, this is impossible for Americans to believe, but they have to get used to it. The Americans didn't know jack shit. They didn't know there was a jet stream. They didn't discover there was a jet stream until they tried to bomb Japan. Suddenly, their pilots are running into a wind that's at 20,000 feet that's hitting them at 60 miles an hour and ultimately forces them to lower their planes, even the B-29s, down to a point where they're hitting the floor and subject to Japanese anti-aircraft fire. This resulted in over 5,000 bombardiers having to parachute over Japan when their planes were shot down. Now, of those, only less than 80 of them survived. And those are the lucky ones caught by the military or the police who were brought in for interrogation. The rest were chopped to pieces by the Japanese public for bombing their city. And uh, the Americans won't tell you this, but that same wind, which rendered such great defense to Japan, brought all the Japanese ICUBs, ICUBs, intercontinental unguided bombs over to the United States. And during World War II, 120,000 Japanese balloon bombs generated at least 100,000 firestorms in North America, most intensively throughout the Pacific Northwest. What people don't understand is the Japanese mapped these currents so well, these air currents, by these fires. Because you might, you might ask, why are they generating all these forest fires? What does that do for them? Because Japanese reconnaissance and airplanes 
were able to map these wind currents so well using these forest fires that on March 9th through the 10th of 1945, when 334 B-29s dropped 2,000 tons of fire bombs on Tokyo, Emperor Hirohito responded with a single wind current directed 30-foot diameter balloon that floated in low across the Yakima Valley through a massive rain front, no less, to its intended target, and it struck down the main transmission line, carrying power from Bonneville Dam to Hanford Works, the site involved in the generation of plutonium for the Manhattan Project's headquarters at Los Alamos. And Hanford was a top-secret site until it was condemned in the 1990s as one of the most irradiated wastelands on the face of the Earth. Yet Hirohito knew about it. And by heating those telegraph lines, carrying that power to the Manhattan Project, he suspended the Manhattan Project from March 10th through the 12th. Total shutdown status, because it took Hanford personnel 72 hours to bring the piles back up to operational capacity, and he exposed total security compromise of the Manhattan Project. That's what a trained scientist in, tar- in charge of a nation in wartime can do. And that's how bad the Americans had it. They were so desperate that they were basically ready to surrender at the time that the Japanese hit them after Hiroshima with the unconventional air weapons loaded with biocidals. They had mapped the wind current so well they could eliminate the entire U.S. population, statistically. And that's when the Americans sued for peace. That's something they're willing to kill to prevent you from knowing. And uh, they fielded a football team that was all offense and no defense. So that's what HARP's about. HARP was designed to make that jet jet stream reverse. The whole idea behind HARP is to generate enough power to make this jet stream go in total reversal in the event of resumption of hostilities with the Empire of Japan. People don't understand how vital that Alaska component is. Before World War II, uh, Dusevsky who was responsible for the concept of a U.S. Air Force, he said, we can only hit Japan from Alaska. From Alaska, we can bomb the Japanese home islands. Alaska dominates the northern Pacific. We've got to attack them from Alaska. So what happened? The Battle of Midway. By the time of the Battle of Midway, Hirohito had realized aircraft carriers were useless. The Ark Royal had been sunk by a tiny German U-boat and all of the concentrated air power on the Ark Royal went down with it. So Hirohito said, I'll sacrifice the carrier fleet to invade Alaska. Now, the Americans present the Battle of Midway. Oh, it was all over for Japan after that. Yeah, they, we sank four carriers. They never tell you that the Japanese may have lost 200 pilots, but the Americans lost 150 of them, along with the one carrier that the Americans lost. So in terms of pilot-to-pilot ratio, it was almost an even battle. Then the Americans don't tell you it was all a distraction and that aside from a tremendous uh, misfire on the part of the Americans by concentrating everything on the Japanese carriers, they totally missed the the game, and the Japanese invaded Alaska. Now, anyone can look this up. Japanese Marines were in the Aleutian Islands of Alaska for the next three years. And all of America's war effort went to Europe because of their own racist inclinations, thinking the white people were a bigger threat. So throughout World War II... Only 15% of all war effort went into the Pacific. And of that 15%, one-third of it went to dislodge the Japanese from Alaska, which would take the rest of the war. That's how brilliant Hirohito was. That's why at the end of the proactive hostilities, the Americans said, we've got to build this harp up in Kokona, Alaska, and then we can reverse the jet stream. That was the whole purpose behind harp. 